We'll come on to our number one now uh, in a moment, but it'd be great to get uh, the opinions of Blues fans about who you think the most f- the five most impactful summer signings are uh, for Birmingham City this season. There's so many to choose from, and you know we've given or, or just about to give our number one and give our opinion. But um, you know, let us know what you think uh, in the comments below. It'd be really interesting. <laughs> So welcome back to BCFC Royal Blue. And I think it's fair to say that uh, Birmingham City have made uh, one or two decent signings over the summer transfer window. And actually that's been reflected in the start to the season with Blues having their best ever start to a football league season. Um, What we're going to do in this uh, podcast is uh, talk about some of those summer signings. So we thought we'd be useful to have a chat about what we thought were the five most impactful summer signings. What we're going to do is go uh, from five to four and uh, talk about which who we've picked individually uh, in those top five. Now, we haven't spoken to each other beforehand. Um, I've got no idea what uh, Matt has picked. Uh, he's got no idea what I've picked. And just one clarification before I go over to Matt for his first pick um, is that the these are the summer signings only, so these are not players that were already uh, at the club before the summer. So, for example, someone like Paik, for example, who you might think should be in the top five, he came in January, so he's not included uh, within the top five. Um, so, Matt, let's start off then. I think this will be interesting. Um, I'm really keen to know who you picked. Um, so, let, who do you pick at uh, number five in terms of you felt has the most impact um, from the summer signings? So, I've gone for a bit of a variety, and I just want to say how difficult this was because we have had an incredible summer transfer window and I think the majority of our transfers have had some sort of impact so this was really difficult to do especially not including contract renewals and these sorts of things so let's get into it so in number five mine is Alfie May Uh, and you know when I saw Alfie May at the start of the season proper goal scorer he's got five goals this season three assists already in league one that was such a relief to me because I feel like we've been relying on loans for the past few seasons I feel like we've you know, had Yuki, who's tied in the legs. And, you know, Alfie May just brought that fresh energy, goal scorer. He knows the league. He's the top goal scorer for the past two seasons, was he, in League One? Definitely the last one. Yeah. Um. So, and also as well, with Alfie May, he brings that bark, that commanding, that experience. Yeah. And I think that's understated as well. Really silly, th- not, not silly thing, but a small thing. But he also seems like a really nice guy. You know, mm. he kind of gets Birmingham. He's... He said before he's from like a working class family. I think his brother's like a painter or decorator who he used to work with or a carpenter or something. And he said something like in a recent interview, he goes, you know, being at a club like Birmingham where the fan base works so hard, the least I can do every weekend is run my heart out for 90 minutes. So I think he gets yeah, it. He I gets, like that. He gets I think, the I think, club. I think Blues fans will respect that. And I love that. And for me, Alfie May takes that number five. Okay, well, this would be short because my number five is also Alfie May. <laughs> <laughs> I picked him as well uh, for all the reasons you said. But uh, for me, you know, obviously the goals, you know, you, you know, he's considered he doesn't start every game which is absolutely amazing considering he won the golden boot last year um you know he's he's um, played 17 games in total scored six goals and three assists so that's 50 uh, so 12 in the league three in the EFL trophy and um two in the Carabao Cup as well so you know that's not a bad record it's six goals from 17 games and three assists for mm. a player that is not starting every yeah. single game and also being tested in other areas yeah and you know we always knew that he had goals in him as well and uh, you know to think that I picked him at number 4 when I looked at this I thought how can he just be number 5 but we've got that many good <laughs> players in this in the team uh, one thing as well and I keep saying this if you watch our channel on a regular basis uh, you know you know that I love Alfie May's work race. Yes. You know, it is out of this world, you know, and what he does for the team is far more than goals. So I think he's a justified um, pick in the top five. And for me, we both picked him at number number, number five. five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that brings on to number four. Shall I, shall I go first this time, just in case I pick the same one as you? Yeah, again? go for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, number four for me is Alex Cochran. Uh, I've picked him because I just think he is so solid and dependable. He's played more game time than any other Blues player this this season so far, mainly because of the injury to Lee Buchanan. So where maybe Chris Davis wanted to give him a break, he can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's just been so good. You know, he, defensively he's very good. He gets good, uh, important tackles in. But he's good going forward as well. So he supports the attack really well. Um, he is such for me is such a fundamental part of our squad. That uh, he, he, you know, for me, he's, he's one of the, I think, one of the best value for money signings that we've got. And I, I, I absolutely love him. So for me, he's my number four. Don't tell me you've got Alex Cochran as number Alex four. four. Uh, Alex, I was going to say Alex four is my number <laughs> Cochran. Alex Cochran is my number four. That's my sort of mini dyslexia there. Um, yeah, I think he's outstanding. Proper footballer. 
Um, and we were chatting to a fan, weren't we, down at the Fulham Under-21 game, and we said, we haven't had a left-back like this since, like, Martin Granger, Stephen Carr, yeah. like a proper, solid, get-stuck-in yeah. left-back. I love him. I think he's great. And you've covered everything, Dad, so I'll keep this one short. Um, yeah, big challenges, good on the ball, gets a crossing, love everything about him. And the highlight, from, not highlight, but a, a perfect comment that someone put on X uh, last week was, the guy's mustard. Yeah, and, and he's just a proper player for yeah. me. Alex Cochran takes number four. Yeah, he's, he's never going to get many goals in terms of his position, but uh, you know, he's had two assists. Uh, he had one in the um, uh, one in League One and one in the EFL Trophy, so he, he's contributing. But it's just what he does for the team, you know, and his pacey as well. He's got, and he's, he's got a great left foot yeah. on him. Aggressive. Well. It's, I think it's only a matter of time for he scores. By the way, because mm. uh, he does take the free kick here and there, yeah. um, and he does deserve a goal. I'd love the, the two people I'm dying for a goal. That is Cochran and Laird. Mm. I'd love for them to get on the score sheet soon I think they deserve yeah. a goal yeah I think I think you're right yeah. as well as well you know uh, his, um, his heat map as well I have to refer to heat maps you know that <laughs> his heat map is insane uh, Alex Cochran it's, it's you know it's obviously all down that left hand side but it, it's just as much over the halfway line as it is <laughs> Before yeah. it as well, so he, he obviously gets through a lot of a lot of miles every um, every game. But yeah. uh, I, I think what, what a great signing he is. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so we both agree so far on number five and number yeah. four. So do you want to give us your number three? Yeah, number three. I mean, again, Dad, I just want to say we have not discussed this before. Not at all. Average, no, so, not at all. Um, so number number three is Willem Willemson. Okay. I wonder, whether, I wonder whether he's your number three. Um, I bet. I bet we've got the same three, possibly in a different order. Well, uh, let's yeah. see, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so for me, four goals, three assists. Uh, you know, he's. Having a great season. I think a key thing with Willems and Dad, I and we've highlighted this so much, is I prefer him in the number 10. Because uh, Chris Davis does tend to play him out on wide yeah. on the right with Stansfield yeah. in the nine and sometimes, you know, uh, Alfie May in the 10 or whoever is in that 10 for that um, particular game. So, yeah, very clever player. I think, you know what I like about Willems and Dad? And I think this flies under the radar a little bit because he gets his credit for his assists and his goals and fair enough. A bit like what you said with Alfie Mace, his work rate. Yeah. He doesn't stop running down that right-hand side yeah. and he does create chances. And, you know, we saw it against Fulham under-21s recently where he put the pressure on. Uh, uh, he, the defender pushed it through Stansfield. Williamson got in. Another lovely assist there. So, um, you know, great plan. I think what's interesting with Williamson, Dad, is, you know, you referenced before the kind of Peter Crouch theory. When someone's that tall, they shouldn't be that technically good. It looks clunky, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. But I think I've gotten over that now. And me and you have spoken highly about Williamson since he's came in. I think he's been outstanding. Yeah, and actually, not, not that he's in my top five, but you mentioned he had four goals and three assists. Actually, that's in League One. Yeah. If you look at his total record, uh, he's had now had, uh, six goals and um, he's got and we just just check because just see just in case he's in my top five um, <laughs> uh, he's got um, in total he's got five goals sorry yeah. and six assists because he got three got three assists in the uh, Fulham under 21s didn't right. he as well yeah. so so actually what you're saying is he's an impactful player yes um, so that's not that he's in my top five by the way just in case yeah. you're thinking that but my number three I wonder where those stats came yeah. from <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number three is Tomoki Iwata yeah. it's not not Williamson it's Tomoki Iwata and I think that Iwata because I think he he we've said this before. He almost came like you know he must have felt so left out when he got came to the club because he came under the shadow of the Jay Stansfield deadline day, yeah. um, you know, signing. And I, I, I he's really surprised me. I mean, I, in terms of how good he is, you know, he's outstanding alongside Pack uh, Pack, and um, they're the engine room of the team, aren't they? And uh, you know, he's chipped in with goals. Uh, he's physical as yeah. well. I like that in the player as well. You know, so he's had uh, four goals uh, and one assist in uh, in ten games. Um, one of those goals came in the EFL Trophy, um, three in the league. Uh, it's just his, his contribution, his overall contribution, the way that he's he's, he's got this relationship now with Peg that they they sort of command. Mm -hmm. That midfield, and I, I've said this before. I know Celtic fans have commented on this. I, I can't see how, in my opinion. I know he's playing in League One now. I can't see how Celtic would have better midfield. He's amazing, isn't he? Yeah, I, I think he's that good. Yeah, I think he's that good. But to me, he's my third uh, yeah. pick for number three for my most impactful uh, players of the summer signings. Do you think Iowata could hack it in the Premier League? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, maybe, I think could... maybe for like an Ipswich or um, an Everton or no, no, I don't. I think for Birmingham City. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, Sadly, Dad, we're in League One. Have you not checked well, the tables recently? Well, you know, let's fast forward. Uh, you know, um, not too far. <laughs> oh in the no, future, I completely agree. Pake yeah. and Iwata will take us. They will be our starting centre mids in the Premier League in X amount of years, however long it takes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, interesting picks. Iwata is your number three? He's my number three, yeah. Okay. So yeah. do you want me to come back to number two or do you want to start your number two uh, now? Which way well, well, well I'll make it easy because my number two is your number three, okay. is Willem Willinson. Okay. He was very nearly my number one. 
Right, very, okay. very nearly my number one. And obviously, um, I've got a feeling we're probably going to have the same number one, but I'm, I'm only preempting. <laughs> but with what he's doing, Willem Willemson, I mean, obviously, you've done the explanation of why you've picked him and a lot of those reasons for me. But, um, you know, he, for such a tall guy, he's so technically he's good. Yeah. You know, you look at his touch, you shouldn't have a touch like that for somebody so tall. <laughs> he's intelligent as well, you know, and he contributes so much to the game. And also, as well, because of his size, he's physical as well. Um, to me, he I think it took him one or two games to adjust. Mm. But you know, at, at the time of recording, we've just beaten Sutton United in the um, the FA Cup. Uh, he scored the goal um, for to, to, to won that game one nil. And so, just so people can sort of you know visualize you know in sort of a timestamp of where mm. we are and what he's done. But I don't know how many games going back now he's had some form of either a goal. A goal or a goal contribution, either an assist or whatever. I think he's brilliant, I, yeah. and I, I think he's well warranted to be number two. And I think yeah. um, a lot of teams will will, will look at him because obviously we bought him, and because he was playing in the Dutch league, wasn't he? And you know, he's, nobody really knew mm-hmm. much about him. But now that he's in the English leagues, okay, albeit League One, mm-hmm. he's going to get a lot of profile. You know, a lot of teams are going to be looking at him, thinking, "Where's who is he? Where's yeah, he come yeah. from?" We've got him. And I'm really, really happy we have. So to me, he's a justified number two. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think he could have easily been on my number one. I was going to say, my top three could have rotated quite easily because they've all been outstanding. But I, you have to put them in certain positions, don't you, for certain mm. reasons. And I think they all resonate with us slightly differently. So mm. I'd love to get Blues fans' comments on this in the comment section. What are your thoughts on one of the five we've picked, I guess, or your own five? You know, we might miss someone, might we, Dad? But we'll go. We'll come to that a little bit later in the video. So again, I'm going to say what you said, and this is going to be short because my number two is your number three. And that's, <laughs> okay. and that's Iwata. Okay. And again, I can't really add to what you said, Dad. He's just been absolutely outstanding. I feel really sorry for the bloke. His transfer went completely completely under the radar and he's arguably been our best one of our best players he's physical gets stuck in big challenges he can distribute and I think him alongside Paik make them a Rolls Royce of the centre mid I don't care if any Barnsley fan is watching this they do not have a better midfield than Birmingham City they are absolutely Mm. incredible and um, you know not only does he get stuck in and condition, but he can score from distance. We yeah. saw him score, what, three from outside the box this season? Four, if you include the Shrewsbury Cup game, I think, or just inside the box. So he's got a screamer on his hands. He's got a good goal in him. I love him. I think he's absolutely fantastic. And, yeah, full credit to Iwate. He's made a really big impact. And I agree yeah. with you, Dad. Celtic fans, Celtic as a club, Celtic fans, however you want to phrase it, I mean, they can't have many better midfielders than him. He's absolutely outstanding. He's, yeah, his goal against um, uh, Bolton, was yeah. fantastic, wasn't it? Oh. You know, but he scored a few like that. Like you said, he's, he's, he scored a few where he's just uh, rifled it in from the edge of the box, yeah. and uh, you know we've lacked that. So, you know, over Blues for many, many years, players yeah. who can actually do that. Yeah. But it's, it's his so, all-round contribution in game, isn't it? Really? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I can't really. It's one of those things. Once you've said everything, so but when I go first or you go first, there's not much to really add on, is there? Because I feel like we say everything in that initial uh, well, part of the video. What's interesting is I've got a feeling you've got the same number one yeah. as me. And if you have, right, we'll come on to that in a moment. If you have, that means we've picked the top five. Yeah, in terms into the same top five yeah. uh, in a slightly different order, but very much. So. In fact, and, it, it, it would be the same order apart from Williamson and Iwata have flipped for us, and yeah. that could easily be done. Someone might put Iwata as their number yeah. one or Williamson. Yeah, as their well, one. we'll come on to our number one now uh, in a moment. But it'd be great to get uh, the opinions of Blues fans about who you think the most fi- the five most impactful summer signings are. Uh, for Birmingham City this season. There's so many to choose from and, you know, we've given or, or just about to give our number one and give our opinion. But, um, you know, let us know what you think uh, in the comments below. It'd be really interesting. So, uh, do you want to say his name or should I? Like? I'm pretty sure he does that. Yeah, okay, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Christoph Yuki. Clara. <laughs> <laughs> He's not brought in either. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, Christoph Clara. Christoph Clara. Yeah. Uh, do you want to explain why you picked him? Just an all-round brick. I call him the brick house. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think if this was a, a non-family podcast ad, I'd probably swap the brick for something else, wouldn't I? But he's just an absolute unit. You know, nothing mm. gets past him. I've got his stats here, Dad. He's won this season 95% of his aerial battles and 92% of his battles on the ground. Wow. 90% and above, on the ground and in the air. Absolute unit. I mean, it's funny because when he came, Dad, I remember Sanderson was having a really good pre-season and people were undecided whether they want Sanderson to start in the team. And fair enough, he got an injury and a suspension. But now, Clara's almost came into this, oh, like, it, first, it com- first completely irreplaceable. I feel like Christoph Clara, for me, just me here, Iowata and Clara are the two names on that sheet. Uh, I think they're absolutely outstanding. Arguably Bielek as well. And Paik. <laughs> <laughs> Going around the well, team. You, you, need, you need to go through the whole of your top five yeah, as well because no. you picked them as your, as your most yeah, effective. Yeah, no, no, I know, I know. And, and um, 
Yeah, I was kind of saying that a bit tongue in cheek, really. But for me, Dad, Clara is just absolutely outstanding. I mean, you're never in doubt, are you? If a ball comes in the air, if it's a one to one battle or maybe a 50 50, you just know he's going to win it yeah. every time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, um, I totally agree. I mean, I've put my description of him absolute mountain. <laughs> he's, an, yeah. he's an absolute mountain. And like you said, he wins so many challenges. When the ball goes in the air, you just know he's gonna, he's he's gonna win it. And uh, you know, he's a goal threat as well because if we have corners or um, set pieces, he, he has chipped in with a goal, hasn't he? He's got one goal and one assist so far. Um, mm-hmm. The goal is in. Uh, so th- the goal is in the EFL Trophy and the assist Warsaw. is in. Them. Yes. Against Warsaw, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Good goal. Assist- yeah. Got a nice look. Yeah, yeah. And he also assisted the Scott Wright goal, remember, against Wigan in the last minute. He kind of did that back heel flick. Was that him, was he? That was him, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was because cl- okay. everyone was going, what's Clara doing? Try- oh, trying yeah, a back yeah, flick? Yeah, because he's got a league. He's, a got a league. He's, got, he's got a league one as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just think he's brilliant. I think if we were playing in the Championship, definitely in the Premier League, he he would be an Austrian international. I think he already, I don't know if he's got international caps uh, already. He might have. But but he he's um, such a good signing. He's yeah. something we've lacked. You know, we said last year, didn't we, that we lacked um, physicality and height at the back. Uh, now look at we got him. We've got Ben Davis. Mm-hmm. We've got Bielek. Um, we've got Dion Sanderson. We've yeah. got a good selection of Rob. But he to me he's the pick of the bunch. I agree. He's, he's the pick of the bunch. Would you pick again if Clara and Bielek side by side? You'd pick Clara over yeah. Bielek on this. Yeah, on this yeah, yeah. I, w- I would, and I do. I do rate. I, mean, I know people of uh, Blues fans have got mixed feelings about Bielek. Some, some. Blues no, fans, I love him. Yeah, but some Blues fans, you know, I say he's not really. Not, that's not his best position. I, th- I think it is. He was a centre back. Yeah, uh, it was. It was Eustace that made him a centre mid. Yeah, I think so. And I think a lot of people thought that uh, that was his position. But how 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 would Bielek get in our midfield now? No, he wouldn't. No, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah, but Mark yeah, Leonard can't even get in there. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, so, but I think I, I like Bielek at the back. Yeah, centre, centre half. I think. Alfie in attack. I'm going to try and get that into as many podcasts as I possibly can. <laughs> that lyric and song, but yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, for, for, for me, uh, yeah, I think uh, Bielek like, he's, he's really good centre half. He's solid, and uh, alongside Christian, um, uh, Christoph Clara, yeah. he is. Um, it's just an immense. Uh, although I've got, I've got to be honest as well. I really, really like Ben Davis as well as he's come in as well and obviously Dion uh, you know he's always been you know a solid uh, defender but I think Dion out of all of them is one of the better ball players when he yeah. gets his range right I mean, yeah, he can yeah, like yeah. but um, for me uh, Christoph Clara is my number one and your number one yeah, number uh, one most, most effective um, uh, player I mean, from the summer signings and this isn't even um, I, we can't go through them dad because it'll take the video too long but you know we've missed out what if it, uh, 13, 14 players here from, yeah. from the whole list that have came in this season yeah. and we're not allowed to include contract renewals with Paik and etc so this really was tough to get down I'm actually quite happy Dad we're on the same page for three of them minus two which was the same but in the, a different order so uh, hopefully we're representing the thoughts of a lot of Blues can, fans can, who can knows you believe, but... Can you believe Matt that you know we both picked the top five in a slightly different order quite mm-hmm. close but you know Neither of us have picked our record signing. Yeah, Stansfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's not. To, and this is no, not saying that Stansfield's a bad place. No, not. No. It's just that we're looking at where we are at the season right now and what players have most made have it, made the impact so far. Could, we could be. We could do this video in like uh, two months' time, and it could we could yeah. have a different five in there. Yeah, because yeah. because uh, you came up with this video idea, Dad, and you pitched it to me and said impactful. So when yeah. I heard the word impactful. That then changed my scope of yeah. how I looked at certain players. Because yeah. don't get me wrong, Stansfield's a class player. We all love Stansfield. Yeah. Um, but in terms of impact, I think if we're going to take attacking positions as an example, Willemson and Alfie may have been more impactful than Stansfield this season, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, well, I think so as well. And uh, that's that's who we think, uh, Blues fans. It'd be interesting to know what your top five are. And as we've already mentioned, just pop them in the comments below and let us know. Remember, it, it, just the criteria we're using is it's only the players that came in during the summer. So players that were here before weren't considered um, and also it's the ones that have had the most impact so far so not, not necessarily your favourite players but the ones that you think have had the best effect on the uh, on the squad so far it's an interesting choice and as Matt said uh, we had quite a little um, difficulty in terms of sorting out uh, our players in order but we you know we've came up with the with the same top five without speaking to each other so I find that very very interesting but uh, yeah leave your comments below and myself and Matt will um, get around to having a look at them and seeing what your choices are if you did like this uh, video then as always don't forget to give us a a thumbs up and if you haven't checked us out on our social media channels already make sure you pop along to our x page and instagram page and if you also like watching your podcast or listening to them on spotify you can do that now we're also on there and you see the handles appearing on the screen for all of these uh, right now and of course if you haven't subscribed to the channel already make sure you hit that red subscribe button uh, subscribe button and if you want notifications you just hit the bell button next to it so every time we put a video out you'll get notified so uh, once again uh, myself and matt will see you 
on the next video.